Hi, third grade. I'm back uh, to discuss the chapter three review. This is going to be the last two pages in your packet for this week, and this chapter review counts as a quiz grade in the grade book. Uh, so you want to work really hard on this. Um, so when you're watching this video, if you'll go get out that worksheet, we're going to go through it question by question uh, to make sure you understand. So if you're watching this now and you don't have it, go ahead and stop it and go get your paper out and your pencil and we'll go through this. If you've already completed it, check to make sure you've done everything you're supposed to. You can make erasures and try to fix it. Uh, we want this to be a really good grade for everybody. So uh, on page 22 of the chapter 3 review, section A says underline the two nouns in each sentence. Remember a noun is a person, place, or thing. So in number one, the sentence says Tommy is going to visit his grandmother. Underline, draw a line under the two words in that sentence that are either a person, a place, or a thing. In number two, his family will travel by airplane. There are two words in that sentence that are either a person, place, or thing. Underline those two things. Number three, Tommy has never flown to Indiana before. Underline the two nouns in that sentence. Number four, he is taking a book about raccoons. Underline the two nouns in that sentence. And number five, his grandmother also enjoys reading about animals. Underline the two persons, places, or things in that sentence. You can stop the video if you need to and go back and finish that section and then turn it back on again. Uh, right now we're going to go on to section B, which says underline the eight common nouns. Now remember, a common noun is any person, place, or thing, not a specific one. Uh, a common noun would be like a girl, a boy, a cat, a dog, a city, um, school, church, those kinds of words are common nouns. And then you're going to circle six proper nouns. Proper nouns are very specific, a specific person. A person's name, um, Mrs. Stockdale. I am a proper noun because I, I am a specific person. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida is a specific place, a city and a state. Uh, not just city, but the word Jacksonville. Um, or things um, like a book is a common noun, but the Bible is a proper noun because it's a specific book. So we're going to go through, and there, in the next five sentences, in between all five of them, there are eight common nouns. So when you see a common noun, just draw a line under it. But if you see a proper noun, there's going to be a clue. Does anybody remember what the clue is about a proper noun? Proper nouns have capital letters. We capitalize our names in the names of cities and states in specific book titles and things like that. Um, so we're going to circle, in between those uh, last five there, we're going to circle six proper nouns. So I'm going to read number six. Lacey and her family live in Wisconsin. That one has some common and proper nouns in it. Number seven, the winter has deep snow. I see a couple of uh, nouns in there. Are they common or are they proper? They will be staying at home this Christmas. I see a couple of nouns in there. I see something common and I see something proper. Number nine, her family reads from the Bible about Jesus. I see some common and proper nouns in there. And number 10, 
Lacey and her family also sing carols and make popcorn. Ooh, that one has proper and several common nouns in there. When you go back and check your work, make sure that you've underlined eight common nouns and that you've circled, remember capital letters, circled six proper nouns. If you need to stop the video to go back and finish, you can and you can start it back. Section C. You're going to write an S on the blank if the underlined noun is singular. Remember, we know that singular means one of something. And you're going to write a P on the line in front of the number if the underlined noun is plural, more than one of something. Number 11 says most Americans celebrate the 4th of July. Americans is capitalized and underlined. I'm sorry, capitalized didn't matter because we're not talking about common and proper, although Americans would be a proper noun. Is Americans singular or plural? Number 12. Some families go to the park and watch fireworks after dark. The word park is underlined. Is that singular or plural? 13. Children enjoy eating cool watermelon and spitting out the seeds. Children is underlined. And number 14. Many Americans show thankfulness to God for their country. Country is underlined. Is that singular or plural? Section D. Write the plural of each singular noun. So on the line next to the word branch, you will write the plural of that. Remembering our special rules about words that end in um, X and Z and S or SH or CH, Remember, the rule is if they end in that, then you add an ES to the end to make it plural. Otherwise, you just add an S. But you might have one where you have to change the Y to I and add ES. Or you might have one of those from the rule that we learned this past week um, where Fs become Vs and we add ES. Uh, and you might have a special one in there. Uh, remember, some words become plural by making them a totally different word. Uh, we, you don't add an S to it. You change it to a different spelling to be the plural. So that is section D. Go ahead and complete section D. And then you can start back up with section E. Section E says underline the correct possessive noun that completes each sentence. We talked about uh, in our earlier video that possessive nouns show ownership. It belongs to someone. So if it is singular, one, one thing or one person, you add an apostrophe and an S. But if it's plural and it already has an S on the end, you just add an apostrophe after the S. So let's see if we remember those as we do number 19. Ethan's family looked forward to Easter. Ethan. We have one Ethan, right? So he's singular. So remember, if things are singular, what do we do? We add apostrophe S. So underline the correct one. Number 20. Their church's sunrise service was early Easter morning. Which one of those two is correct? Remember, we add apostrophes and S's. Number 21. The choir's hymn was full of joy. The choir. Now, there may be more than one person in a choir. There's usually a lot of people in a choir. But it's one choir. So it's a singular choir that they're talking about here, okay? The choir but it belongs to the choir. The hymn belongs to the choir. So which one of those one choir shows ownership, possessiveness? Number 22. Then the family went to their grandparents' house to eat. Which one of those would be correct? As you move on to section F, when you finish section E, you're going to match the letter of the correct abbreviation for each proper noun. 23 is drive, 24 is September, 
25 is Lane, 26 is Saturday, 27 is January, and 28 is Thursday. You will look at the column right over here and decide A through F which one matches the correct abbreviation for the proper noun and write the letter on the blank. After you finish section F you will go to section G and in section G you have five sentences. You're going to use our proofreading mark three little lines under the letter that should be capitalized in each of those sentences. Remembering that we capitalize at the beginning of a sentence and we also capitalize proper nouns, people's names, uh, specific places. Um, we capitalize um, days of the week, months of the year, holidays, books of the Bible, uh, places. So make sure that you put um, the proofreading mark, the three lines under nine words in those five sentences, nine words need to be capitalized that are not. So put the three little lines under the nine words. That's between all of them. There's, there may just be one in the sentence. There may be more than one in the sentence. Uh, there may be none. All the words might have capital letters that need a capital letter in one of those sentences. That's clue, but I won't tell you which one. And then after you do that, you don't want to miss the last set of instructions. The last set of instructions say to separate the words in three series with commas. So in three different sentences of those five, uh, they have words in a series. That is a list of something. Uh, we had a sandwich, chips, cookies, and a drink for lunch. So you would put sandwich comma. Uh, chips, comma, cookies, comma, and a drink. The co there would be three commas in that one. Um, remember, commas go before the word and, but they do not go after the word and. And it separates the things we're listing. Three of the sentences have lists of things. So remember, we're going to use our little symbol where you add something like the little point of an arrow and then inside the point of the arrow uh, draw your comma where the commas should go uh, and that will be all of um, this there that's the last section so make sure that you will go through and watch the video as we've talked about it um, and finish that up that's going to count as quiz grade and we've gone over it together, so if everybody's watched the video and done what they're supposed to do, then you should make a really good grade on that quiz grade. Uh, you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you on YouTube next week. Bye-bye.